Hey folks, welcome to Puzzle Spoilers. Today we're taking a look at Turtle Trip. This puzzle was designed by Gerard Hudson at Bayou Puzzles. This is a 3D printed puzzle. It consists of 178 total parts, 41 of which are 3D printed. This is a puzzle box with a hidden internal chamber. It's also a sequential discovery puzzle. So we're gonna discover lots of different tools and we'll have to use those tools to get to the prize inside. It's one of the few mechanical puzzles out there that has an electronic component to it. The battery and the compartment itself are not a part of the puzzle, but you will need some fresh batteries when you start solving this puzzle. Turtle Trip comes with a few extras. Here's a nice laser cut piece of cardboard with the Turtle Trip logo. It also comes with this nice wooden laser cut instruction and story. We learn from this that the goal of the puzzle is to find the turtle's missing pants. We also get this laser cut acrylic instruction stand for these instructions. It's funny that these are printed on just some scrap cardboard. We can see some logos there on the other side. All right, let's get acquainted with each of the sides. Here's the turtle trip side. We have a couple of things here. There's a screw here. There's a hole here, and it looks like there's a little light LED right there. Let's look at this side. We have these three strawberries, and it looks like a little green tip to a strawberry there. And some of the strawberries move around. This side has just a lot of holes. This is the bubble maze. This side is our turtle. Looks like he's hanging out on a log or something. We also have a screw right there, and the turtle itself is kind of loose, kind of feels like a button or something. And these two pieces also kind of jiggle around these two side pieces. The top has a bunch of screws, and none of these screws are used in the solve. And this is the access panel. This kind of looks like the diaphragm on a camera lens. On the bottom here, we have the maker's mark, and there's a hole there and we've got the battery compartment. We know that that is not involved in the solve. We also have these four green feet. These are not involved in the solve either. All right, let's start the solve. We're gonna start by inspecting this strawberry side. Let's remove this upper right strawberry, and we can do that just by turning counterclockwise and pulling out. We'll notice there's a magnet there on the back side of that strawberry. We can put that aside for a moment. Now let's look at this center strawberry. This strawberry just pushes aside just like that and it reveals two holes. In the center hole, there's a little button. We can actually push that button with the little tip of the strawberry that we just removed. We click once to turn on, click again to turn off. Once we turn that button on, this bit will reveal itself to be a light. There's a light on, you can't really see it under these bright lights, but there is a light on there. We want to make sure that it is on for the rest of the solve. Now let's look in this other hole and we'll notice there is a ball bearing inside of that hole. It's a little hard to see here, but what we want to do is wiggle the puzzle so that we get the ball bearing from here over to this hole on the upper right. We can do that just by turning it upside down and shaking a little bit. And then that ball will pretty easily drop down into that hole and we can't take it out with our fingers, so we need to use that magnet and grab it just like that. All right, next we wanna focus on this lower left strawberry. Yours might be locked up. If it is, we wanna put it into this position with Turtle Trip up on the top and the door on the right side. At that point, you should be able to rotate this and turn it counterclockwise and screw it out and that will leave an open hole here and the rest of the strawberry which hides a thick metal pin. Let's take that thick pin and we're gonna put it in the hole on the turtle trip side and push down. That will release this bit right here and we can pull it out and that will reveal a long skinny pin. Can compare those two pins there. This bit has a sleeve which houses that skinny pin. Now let's take this skinny pin and we're gonna put it into that top rightmost hole here on the bubble maze side. 
When we push that pin in, it's going to push another internal pin away, which is locking this top left bit here. And I find this can be a little difficult to get off. So if you just tilt it forward, it will fall out and reveal another thick pin. Next, we're gonna have to navigate our ball bearing through the bubble maze and into that hole there internally. So this is definitely the most difficult part of this puzzle. I need to give a shout out to the YouTube channel, Local Cross. He figured this out. I'm gonna to try to condense his description. If you wanna check out his tutorial, I'll put a link below. I'm not sure how he figured it out. This is a multi-layered maze. And if you make one wrong turn in the maze, the ball reverts itself to this lower right quadrant. Let's switch to an overhead view here. Okay, so now we're gonna focus on solving the bubble maze. We need to focus on the ball bearing and the three rods that are gonna help us navigate this ball bearing through the maze. We have two identical short, thicker rods and one longer skinny rod. First, let's lay this flat so that the bubble maze is facing straight up. We're gonna take the ball bearing and put it in this hole here on the top left. And it should just kind of sit right underneath the surface of the puzzle. Next, we're gonna take one of these short rods and put it right there. And let's take the other short rod and put it right here. Now with two hands, hold down these two rods to kind of secure them with your thumbs. And we're gonna tilt the puzzle to the right. We're trying to get the ball bearing to sit underneath this hole right here. The ball should pretty easily travel from this hole to this hole when you tilt it to the right. You might have to shake just a little bit. All right, let's take the rod out of this hole and into this hole. Leave this rod in. Now we're gonna try to get the ball from this hole to this hole. Again, hold these two down in place as you pick up the puzzle and tilt it to the left, shake a little bit. It shouldn't be too difficult to get the ball to sit right into that hole. You could see it there where my pointer finger is. All right, next we're gonna relocate both of the rods. We're gonna put one here and one here. We're also gonna take our skinny rod and put it into this hole. We're just gonna to try to catch the ball in this spot. The skinny rod might help with that. Again, use both hands to secure these pieces as you pick it up and move it around. You don't want these rods to fall out. We're gonna tilt the whole puzzle to the right and towards us a little bit. We're trying to get the ball into this hole where we have this skinny rod placed. Okay, there we go. And we've secured that ball right there where my pointer finger is. Next, we wanna move this rod. We'll place it right here. Now we're trying to get the ball from here to this hole here. Let's secure those rods with our thumbs. And we need to tilt to the right and then to the left a little bit in order to get it into that hole. There we go. That's probably the hardest move of the bubble maze because we have to go right and then left. You should be able to find your way to that spot right there where my pointer finger is. All right, just one more move. We need to move both of the pins. We're gonna move one here and one here. Next, the ball's gonna move from this hole here to this small hole, and the ball will actually drop down into the depths of the puzzle at that point. We're gonna turn the puzzle to the right and shake a little bit. We're gonna hear the ball fall down a little bit, and we're not gonna see the ball anywhere here. We can now remove these two pins. If at any point you mess up on the bubble maze and you make a wrong turn, your ball might fall down and automatically be placed in this lower right spot. It's held in there magnetically. If that happens, and it probably will, it might take you a few times to follow the maze exactly and get the ball into the right positions. Take one of the short, thick pins, and we're gonna insert it into the hole on the opposite spot from where that ball is. We'll put it in and push, but make sure to put your hand out and grab the ball when it falls out so you don't lose it. When we push that pin, it releases a mechanism that's holding in 
the ball there and then we can grab the ball and try the bubble maze over again. Now that we have the ball bearing in the proper spot, we can use this long skinny pin. We're gonna insert it into this hole right here. And it's a good sign if it doesn't drop all the way in. That means we can use it as a button now. And let's see what happens when we push down on this button. Our turtle pops off. You might have to kind of pry it off a little bit by pinching its head. And then we can pull it off completely. We'll notice it has a magnet there on the bottom. And here we see where that ball dropped and it's held in place here by a magnet. We can pull that off and put it somewhere safe. Our next step is going to involve the small strawberry again. We wanna take the ball bearing and put it on this side of the strawberry and it'll hold in place because of the magnet there. And then we wanna put the ball bearing inside of that hole right there, just like that. And the ball will be magnetized and we can pull out a tool here and then give it a little tug and the whole assembly will come out. Let's take a closer look at this bit. There's a magnet here and then there's this hidden Allen wrench which we can easily remove. The bit that comes out here is just used to actually remove it. We don't need to remove that piece itself. That just kind of stays in there. Now that we have the Allen wrench, let's go ahead and remove the screw right there. There we go. And let's also remove the screw on the turtle trip side. The turtle trip screw is shorter than the screw we removed from this side. So let's take the longer screw, the one we removed from there, and screw it into the turtle trip side in place of where that shorter screw was. There we go, once that's totally screwed in, the green light turns on on the lower right portion there. Inside the turtle is a hidden RFID key. When we put the turtle in the correct spot, it'll send the signal to open up the top lid and the puzzle will be solved. Take the turtle and we're gonna move it in this area right here and I just heard a click. Once we hear that click, that's a good sign. It means that we can manually open up the diaphragm here. And that reveals the hidden internal components and our prize, which all along was the missing shorts that the turtle was looking for. And the shorts fit the turtle. Let's take a closer look at the locking mechanism. So we can see that there are these three pins that pop up and down. When the pins are in the down position, they don't interfere with the doors at all. But when they're in the up position, they rest inside of that small divot on each of the doors and the doors are then in the locked position. There's a piece of transparent plastic here so you can't easily put your fingers in there and mess up the components, but we do see a circuit board and there's quite a bit going on in there. Lots of interesting engineering and ingenuity here that went into the design of this puzzle. Initially, I thought these doors were gonna open up automatically. They don't, so make sure that you go in and use your fingers to move these. That's the turtle trip solve. The solve required the use of a lot of tools. Let's go through and reassemble everything. Our first step is to put the turtle's shorts back in the top, and you may need to fold these a little bit. Just make sure that the doors close smoothly and can open smoothly before you put everything back. I had to fold mine a little bit in order to get the proper clearance. Once the lid is closed, we're gonna take the turtle and we're gonna bring it close to this part of the puzzle. And we're gonna hear a click, that's a good sign. And then we need to use the short, thick rod and put it in the bottom hole here. That's going to reset and lock the puzzle. And then we should no longer be able to open the lid with our fingers. Next, let's put the screws in the correct position. So let's take this screw out from the turtle trip face. We're gonna take that screw, that long screw, and put it back right there. Next, let's take our short screw and put it back where it originally was in the turtle trip face right there. Next, let's take this bit 
and put the Allen wrench back where it came, just like that. And it is magnetized, so it'll stick in place by itself. You can now put this whole assembly back in the slot just by pushing down, and there's a magnet that sucks it back down. Next, we can take the turtle and we can reinstall it. There's also a magnet there, sucks that back into the puzzle. Now we're gonna put our pins back. Let's take this long pin and we're gonna focus on this bit right here. Let's take that long pin and put it in the hole right there on the bubble maze side. We're gonna push that pin away temporarily so that we can put one of the short pins back into the hole there. Next, let's take this piece and reinstall it into that hole. Just like that. Orientation matters here, so make sure that it's oriented correctly just like that. And then we can shake the puzzle a bit. That internal locking pin will lock this piece in place. Next, we're gonna put away this long skinny pin. Let's take this piece and reinstall it along the shaft there. And let's put that assembly side for a moment and take the short thick pin and we're going to use the button right there so using that thick pin we need to push down while simultaneously inserting this bit back into place and the orientation matters on this piece as well so make sure it's oriented just like that and then once it's in place we can take out the short pin, and that becomes locked into place. Next, let's put the short, thick pin back in place. That's gonna go into this small strawberry, just like that. We need to turn the puzzle upside down. There's a pin in this hole that will prevent this piece from going in unless we're upside down. So let's put that back in. And then when we turn the puzzle, right side up and rotate this. The pin will drop back down through the strawberry and lock it in place. Don't forget to turn off the puzzle. We need to use the small strawberry to push that button. We can't really see it because of these bright lights, but once you push that button, a small light will turn off right here. Next, let's take the ball bearing and we're gonna put it into this hole on the strawberry side, top right and we can kind of push it in using our last strawberry here. It'll drop down and then we want to shake it to the left and we'll see it up here. You can't really see it, but it is underneath that hole and that is in the correct reset spot. One thing to note here, before we put in the final strawberry in the top right hole there, we wanna make sure the center strawberry is oriented correctly. It can be here, this is the correct orientation, or it can be rotated like this with this little metal bit showing. And we don't want that metal bit showing when the puzzle is fully solved. We wanna make sure that the strawberry is like that. With the metal piece in the proper spot, it forces us to make this counterclockwise turn first. That metal bit is actually a locking mechanism. It prevents the center strawberry from turning clockwise and revealing the button. We don't wanna see that button until we have the tool to press it down with, which is this upper right strawberry. And there we go, the turtle trip has been reset and we're back to our unsolved state. In addition to the main solve, there's three Easter eggs. These were revealed in the comments section on the video that Chris Ramsey did on this puzzle. Chris is a famous magician and YouTuber. He's got a great YouTube channel. I'll put a link below to where you can watch his videos. All three of the Easter eggs are contained within the internal chamber. They're all fun 3D printed components, sort of like Where's Waldo, underneath the transparent piece of plastic here inside the puzzle itself. Gerard revealed the three Easter eggs to be, find the three white fish and make them glow. You may need a flashlight. I'll show you where those three white fish are and you don't necessarily need a flashlight as long as you're under some good lighting. But basically the Easter egg exists underneath this transparent piece of glass. There's a white wall you can see right below where my pointer finger is. 3D printed on that wall are three white fish. 
The best way to see those fish is actually to go into a darker room, take a flashlight, shine it into the bubbles on the bubble maze, and then you're gonna see a really cool fish design on that white interior wall. The second Easter egg was find the red fish and make him swim. The red fish is hidden pretty deep underneath a lot of these mechanicals. Again, it's beneath the transparent piece of plastic here, right below where my pointer finger here is on the top left. The fish is attached to an internal piece that moves when you push the thick pin into the hole there. And that was a part of our solve earlier. When we move that pin in and out, we're actually moving the red fish in and out on the inside of the puzzle. I boosted the light here pretty dramatically so you can see the red fish there moving in and out. The third and final Easter egg is make the party sign light up. We need to use our RFID tool here, the turtle, and we're gonna look inside again at the internal components. On the back side of the battery component, we can see the batteries in there. There's a transparent piece of plastic, and on that transparent piece of plastic, laser engraved, is the word party several times. When we move the turtle into the correct spot here where the RFID sensor is, it turns on a blue light on the inside right next to that transparent piece of plastic that has party all over it. The light only goes on for a few seconds and it's really impossible to show with the lights on. So I have the lights off. I know you can't really see anything. There is a flashing blue light that goes on for a few seconds on the inside and kind of illuminates that party sign. This puzzle really is a technical feat. The amount of design and engineering that goes into something like this is just astounding. I hope more puzzles like this come out, particularly electronic ones, considering how few of them exist. And I think there could be a big market for interesting mass-produced sequential discovery puzzles. I think a lot of people would find this really interesting. Unfortunately, a lot of people just don't know that something like this exists or is even possible. That's Turtle Trip. I'll put a link below to Bayou Puzzles website and some names of some auction sites that I like where you might be able to snag one of these. If you found the video interesting, please consider liking and subscribing. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. That's it for today, folks. I'll see you on the next video.